Yo, what's up? Uh, first things first, in case you don't know, I'm Malcolm Jamal Warner. That you shouldn't know. Second thing, we're in Queens. And as you can see, we are in a very real neighborhood in Queens. But there's one thing that makes this neighborhood just a tad bit different, and that's this building right here. Tonight, it's a look back at eight years of The Cosby Show. Join your host, Malcolm Jamal Warner, for an inside, behind-the-scenes look at America's favorite TV show. That's the one that I will remember until I forget. Favorite memories. <laughs> bloopers, guest stars, and more. It's the big event before the big event. The last laugh. Memories of The Cosby Show. Yep, something very different happened here. You see, this is Kaufman Astoria Studios, the studio where we taped uh, the show. You know, uh, uh, the Cosby Show. Yeah, yeah, that's it, that's the ticket. You know, I'm gonna be real honest though, this place is kind of eerie. I mean, this is a stage where I literally grew up. All the sets are gone, the cast and the crew who kind of became my second family are all gone. It almost seems like everything is gone. But then again, you know, what we did here can never truly be forgotten because we all have our memories. You see, what took place on the stage every week can only be described as magic. Mom, you know what you need. What we actually all can use. A nice, soothing dog. A dog for all of us. A real family dog. <laughs> we already have a family dog. You. <laughs> your sister doesn't call you names. All I wanted was an animal whose name starts with the same letter as most of the grades on your report card, which you are getting today. Now this is a scene from the very first Cosby show. I'm assuming that it will be a much better report card than last semester's. Oh, I'm assuming the same thing. <laughs> well, Felicia, man, you be hooking these sandwiches up. <laughs> um, well... And everyone has their favorite episode of The Cosby Show. One that comes to mind offhand is the episode where I believe it's, it's the eldest daughter. She's getting married, uh, and the gentleman has a child from a previous marriage. He's divorced. And at first, the parents don't quite take to the idea. I know whatever problems come up, our love will see us through. That's how strong I love it. Could we please stop all this love talk for just one minute? <laughs> now, where is this child's mother? And where are you going to live? Not here. <laughs> I enjoyed that one. Oh, by the way, you caused double part. Everything is funny on that show. That's one of the funniest shows on television. I love it. When the woman has the baby inside of her, then I go in and I take it out. No, you don't. Everybody knows that the stork brings the baby. <laughs> the stork brings the baby to the hospital, drops it in the back of that. The mommy goes to the hospital and gets it. Why? When I put my hand on the mother, I could feel things moving all around. That's not a baby. What is it? Yeah. My favorite episode is when Vanessa went to Baltimore to see The Wretched, the concert. And uh, my car got, our car got stolen, and we didn't report the car, and we went on to the concert. And finally, uh, uh, Cliff and Claire meet us at the bus depot. It's you lying on the floor of some burning building, dying of asphyxia, and you're down in Baltimore having big fun. Weren't you, Vanessa? Isn't that where you were? Didn't you go down there to Baltimore? Mom, shut up! <laughs> Don't you dare open your mouth when I'm asking. <laughs> Did you really think that the four of you could go off careening into the night and not one single parent would find out about it? Did you really think that, Vanessa? Mom, shut up! <laughs> because I know what was going on. You were off being wild and free with the wretched and singing the wretched song. 
Now, I know you told me about it in the car, Vanessa, but just for the record, one more time, how did it come to pass that you did not get into the concert with the wretched and the big fun? <laughs> you better answer me when I ask you a question, girl. There was this episode that, um, that I really loved, and it said, um, you got the right one, baby. And then I said, uh-huh. <laughs> the Pepsi commercial. Uh -huh. um, we made that up, me and Mr. Cosby. Hand me the screwdriver with the big yellow handle. And give me the right one, please. All right. <laughs> you got the right one, baby. <laughs> My favorite episode of The Cosby Show was, I think it was in our fifth season, and Theo got in trouble by his girlfriend because he got caught kissing another girl in the lounge of his girlfriend's dormitory. And then Theo went home all depressed, and Cliff came down and told him in order to get Justine back, Theo had to learn how to sing the blues. The blues. <laughs> Begging level, my son. <laughs> now listen to me. Pam, 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 The best one for me was, uh, I, I dedicated it to, to Buster Keaton, and it was the one where Cliff, it was Thanksgiving, and Cliff, they kept sending Cliff out to get more things that they had forgotten. Um, he had to go out and get eggs, he had to go out and get spices, and that particular Thanksgiving, it was raining, and it, and it, and, uh, and and I got, you know, to put the hat on, and they kept wetting me down, and we had to, when the fan was blowing and leaves were blowing, and Cliff just kept that, that face just dripping. Dumb canned pumpkin, <laughs> your stupid eggs, and your silly nut. Nutmeg, and thank you. <gasps> I'm not going back out there. Now, I wish I had some more favorite episodes to show you, but we got a lot more ground to cover, so stick around. Next up, Michael J. Fox, Hammer, bloopers and outtakes, plus footage never seen on television before.